over 23 billion kilometers away from Earth, the Voyager 1 spacecraft drifts silently along at 17 kilometers per second. On board it contains a vinyl record, printed with sounds and music from planet Earth, including Chuck Berry's 1958 rock and roll hit, Johnny B. Good. There are beautiful pictures of humans, nature and our world, maps of the solar system and what we know about the universe. The hope being that, perhaps one day, far in the future, intelligent life finds the record and learns about the Earth and human life. There are instructions written on the record in binary, which uses the hydrogen atom as a key. Hydrogen is the most common element in the universe, so it's probably that this is the atom the intelligent life is most likely to know about. The golden record is estimated to last anywhere between 2 million and a billion years if left undisturbed in the vacuum of space. But most people don't live in outer space. If your goal was to keep a record of something on Earth for as long as possible, with as little maintenance required, how would you go about doing that? What's the longest you could keep something legible? When you hear the word archive, most people would think of crusty old books and a large library, but most paper and books will break down after a hundred years at most. Archive paper is specially treated with chemicals to make it last longer. If stored carelessly, it can last 250 years. If stored properly, the lifetime doubles to 500 years. When new legislation is passed by the British Parliament, the documents are written on goat skin because it lasts a very long time. One of the oldest pieces of legislation in the world still in effect is the Magna Carta, written in 1215. There are many copies of the treaty still on display around the country. This ensures that we will still know all the laws ever passed by Parliament hundreds of years in the future. A German manuscript from the year 600 AD is still in perfect condition and written on this material. The only downside is that it must be kept at a good temperature, ideally 20 degrees Celsius, otherwise it gets mouldy, and that requires maintenance. This is the same for fabric too. The Bayeux tapestry, depicting the Norman conquest of England, is approaching a thousand years old, and while it's available for viewing, it must be kept in low light at a consistent temperature in a vacuum chamber to avoid damage from light or dust in the air. When the United States Library of Congress stores a motion picture for being culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant, it stores the movie on celluloid film. This can last upwards of 70 years if stored correctly, but incorrectly can be gone within a year or two. What about digital storage? Archive.org, one of the largest digital archives, has billions of web pages stored from as far back as 1994. But like everything on the internet, it's stored somewhere, the archive.org server room. And just like physical storage mediums, digital media has a death date too. Most computers, like the one you're using to watch this video, use one of two storage method. Solid state drives or hard disk drives. Solid state drives are the faster and more common ones in this day and age. They store electrons in tiny microscopic cells to determine data. But because energy isn't static, it can decay and change form over time, leaving an SSD without power for only a few months can cause data loss. 10 years in a too hot or too cold room, and that data is probably gone forever. Hard drives are a bit better because they use tiny metallic particles physically stored in little slots that cannot be moved unless by the read-write needle. The problem with that is when the needle deteriorates, and the drive cannot get up to the speed needed to read the disk properly. After 10 to 20 years of no maintenance, a hard drive is useless too. A more permanent format might be a CD-ROM or DVD, but these trusty physical media formats are subject to decay and rot. The problem with these is that they're unpredictable. Some CDs from the year 2000 are already failing, while other studies show the maximum a disc could survive is over 700 years. 
VHS tapes fare slightly better because unlike CDs where rotting one part can kill the readability of the entire disc, VHS tapes gradually lose data, meaning some of it can be saved. It's usually around 25 years. But even if you could store data digitally for hundreds of years, there's no guarantee it can be read back properly. In 1986, the BBC conducted an extensive survey on over 9,000 children in the country, and in a technological first, they stored the data digitally on large laser discs like this one. But come 2002, less than 20 years later, the data had become unreadable. Not because the discs had deteriorated, but because the devices used to read back the data were already obsolete. Very few computers in 2002 had the capacity to read back a disc from 1986. I mean, this is the year that Windows XP came out. Your new laptop or PC probably doesn't even come with a CD drive. Maybe in another 20 years, computers won't even have USB ports as we know them. Quantifying how long information stays readable has been a topic of debate in the scientific community for a while now. This is because one side effect of burning uranium for nuclear energy is that the radioactive waste the process generates has to be buried for centuries until its radioactivity declines to a safe level. The remains of the Chernobyl nuclear disaster are estimated to remain toxic for 22,000 years, and if you want to keep track, there's a handy Twitter account posting twice daily updates. In a thousand, five thousand, or ten thousand years, humanity could have drastically changed. Ecological collapse, nuclear war, global disease could completely alter human society, and any records or warnings we leave about the disaster could be destroyed or useless for whoever is around in a few thousand years. We have a moral obligation to warn future generations about the danger, but how do we create a sign or a set of instructions that warns future humans no matter how primitive or advanced their society is? Pictograms like these have been proposed to be built near areas with radioactive waste, to warn future humans that digging or mining the area will ultimately kill them. But how can we be sure that this will work? In 10,000 years from now, humans could read back to front, or vertically, rendering this graph useless. English and Arabic numerals may not be used. They could interpret it as a story of what happened, not what is going to happen if they get too close. There's just no way to make sure the message will be understood. Another proposal is to build scary monuments near the waste deposits to keep people away. But once again, humans are resilient and brave creatures, going to extreme lengths to attempt the dangerous just because we can. There's no guarantee people would be scared by these structures, and may see them more as things to be explored and explained. One of the more crazy ideas proposed is to breed genetically modified cats that are sensitive to high levels of radiation. The cats will change colour and become hostile around the site, warning humans of the danger. But it isn't just nuclear waste that gets all the attention when planning for the far future. In 1980, an anonymous individual or group of individuals constructed the Georgia Guidestones, a set of instructions written in eight of the most common languages at the time, on some 19-foot stones in the middle of the US state of Georgia. These rocks act as a calendar, a clock, and a compass with a list of advice to anyone who might be reading on how to rebuild society after some kind of catastrophic event. One of the more controversial articles suggests that any future society should keep the global population under half a billion. Many experts agree that the Hoover Dam is one of the few man-made creations that is set to survive thousands of years into the future, even with or without proper maintenance. And one Oscar J.W. Hansen, 
a Norwegian-American architect, saw this as an opportunity to utilize that fact. Hansen installed a celestial clock onto the plaza of the dam that would be accurate for over 26,000 years, using the current position of the planets and stars as an indicator of when the dam was constructed and how long it has been since then. The clock is scarily accurate, and a lot of mathematical planning was needed to make it. But at least for thousands of years into the future, humans can figure out how it works and calculate the current solar year down to the precise day. You may think this is beyond the power of simple cavemen, but the people who built Stonehenge 3000 years ago knew about predicting summer and winter solstice because that's the way Stonehenge is orientated. Obviously, there is no definitive answer, but my personal favourite was proposed in 1984 by Hungarian-American linguist Thomas Siboek. He suggested that, get this, an international church of atomic priesthood should be set up, a Vatican-like organisation whose sole job it is to inject religion-like rituals and legends about nuclear energy into society. Religion persists for hundreds and thousands of years through war, famine, and plague. Creating a nuclear cult will keep humans reminded of what lies yonder after our other institutions are long gone. Perhaps the best way of preserving something isn't on paper or digitally or signs with scary faces on. It's within us, as humans, in the form of a shared culture and history. Radiation, whatever that is, is something we don't want. Cause it withers our crops and it burns our skin and it turns our livestock on. So don't change color. Little kitty, don't flash your eyes. So don't change color. Little kitty, don't flash your eyes. So don't change color.